Every day, people put off starting an Airbnb business because they think that they have to create some sort of interior design masterpiece. Oh, and I also built this table. What is that, chestnut? But that's definitely not the case. I mean, honestly, my first set of Airbnbs were kind of trash. The problem. Everything in here is like one big tacky blouse. Oh, come on. But they still managed to make between one and $3,000 of profit every single month. Furnishing an Airbnb can definitely be a bear, but it doesn't have to be. You just have to know where to look. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's episode of... I don't really consider myself a designer, but truth be told, when you're starting an Airbnb business, I don't think you have to be. When I was getting my first Airbnb unit off the ground, I was going to let go, Facebook Marketplace, and I was definitely hitting up the free section of Craigslist way more than I cared to admit. I'd be driving around the road and I would see things on the side of the road. I'd be like, oh, can I take that dresser and paint it? In fact, I did do that one time and I painted it this like weird, ugly, mustard yellow thinking that I was like so creative. Ultimately, here's why I think that furniture is such an important investment. I quickly learned two things. The number one most important investment that you can make in an Airbnb is hiring a quality photographer. The number two most important investment is quality furniture. And here's why. Replacing furniture actually costs you twice, maybe even thrice. When you buy crappy furniture and you put that in your Airbnb, it's inevitably gonna break. So now, let's say that you have to replace that cheap dining room table or that chair. Well, you also have to find someone to come and assemble that new dining room table or chair and then haul away your old dining room table and chair. And then if that breaks again because you just replaced it with the same crappy item, then it's gonna break again. And then by that time, you're gonna say, oh, I'm so tired of replacing this dang table. I'm just gonna spend the money on a nice one. And now you've spent so much more money than you ever would have had you just coughed up the money a little earlier. So my general POV is just going to be buy new furniture versus buying used furniture because if you buy used furniture, it's just that much closer to breaking on you. Listen, I know that it's more expensive, but I promise you it's worth it. So buy nice, not thrice. And hey, if you want to download my very comprehensive list of all the items I put in my Airbnbs, then I'll leave a link for you down in the description below. So how much does it actually cost to furnish an Airbnb? It's hard to give you one figure on this because I've slowly leveled up my design over time. When I first got started, I was furnishing my places for two to three thousand dollars. Nowadays I'm spending about ten to fifteen dollars a square foot. This means that if a place is a thousand square feet, it can cost me between ten and fifteen thousand dollars to furnish a unit. This can easily scale up when you consider higher end places like my 880 square foot small home, Casa Mariposa, where I spent about $20,000 to furnish it. Now, if you're on a budget, it's totally possible to spend between seven and $10 a square foot, but you'll need to make some compromises on a lot of your different statement pieces. So I know that begs the question, where do I buy all my stuff? And that's a secret. No, I'm just kidding. Let's hit the nitty gritty. And it goes without saying, cause I always mention whenever I'm sponsored before the Rob mob gets me in the comments, none of these places paid me or are sponsoring me to make this video. Though if I were, y'all should be happy for me, right? That's a good thing. But anyway, this is genuinely where I shop for like most of my Airbnbs whenever I'm setting up a unit. So first of all, I want to say that there will be a large temptation to buy most of your furniture at Ikea and Target. I would really shy away from this. When I was first getting started, I was like, oh my God, Ikea is amazing. But then I really started to look around and examine other Airbnbs. And when I would, I'd be like, oh, I've got that lamp. Oh, I've got that giant poster of Melon Monroe. Oh, I've got that Swedish meatball holder. Now there are some key exceptions here, of course, when it comes to Target. One thing that's totally raw built to prove is effectively every single thing in the hearth and hand section, because our gods Chip and Joanna Gaines would never let us down. I really love their mirrors, jars and containers, and rise and shine coffee mugs, which I know are oddly specific, but they're cute, sue me. Usually when I'm furnishing an Airbnb, I walk in with two carts and just buy out the section. I tend to buy all my sheets from Ikea. I also get my duvet covers from there and my duvet inserts. And the reason I like getting my sheets from there is because they're 100% cotton. And they're the only place where you can get 100% cotton sheets super cheap. Otherwise, good cotton sheets can cost you double, triple, or quadruple if you bougie AF, which you're not because we're trying to stick to a budget. And you really don't want to splurge too much on sheets anyways, because you're going to be replacing those things like every couple of months. So it's best to keep that part of your budget tighter. You know what that's from? No. You will in a second. Didn't say lose no. weight. I might say tighten. Tight. A little tighter. Final little thing here, I get a lot of my curtains from Ikea too. Now let's move on to what I consider adult Ikea, and that's gonna be World Market. They are a big box chain, but they just have a way more premium product for the price. I love getting couches, dining room tables. Oddly enough, my favorite place to get plates. 
All right, we're on borrowed time here because the kids are going crazy and my wife is cooking in the kitchen, but I just wanted to speak to art real fast and say, in general, I try not to buy art from any big box chain, but in a pinch, if I absolutely have no option, I get a lot of my art from World Market. I think that they tend to have like the better, more unique art. Your art was the prettiest art of all the art. But for the most part, I try to buy downloadable prints from Juniper Print Shop. I'll then send it to FedEx to get printed. I'll frame it up and hang it in my house. And I like doing this specifically because there are like thousands of options to choose from. Whereas places like Ikea, Target, Ross, World Market have like five to 10 singular pieces that literally everyone uses for their Airbnb. Let's take a moment for a public service announcement about plants and pillows. In my mind, two things really make or break a space. And that's usually gonna be throw pillows and fake plants. Now, you can do real plants. It's obviously gonna be a lot more ideal. The problem is that plants are living things, and if you don't have your cleaners, your guests, or Matt Damon helping you tend to your plants, they're gonna die. And we don't want plants to die. So for me, I'm always just leaning on fake plants. And I will say that there is a very big difference between fake plants and nice fake plants. So honestly, as crazy as it sounds, if you get a very good fake plant, it's typically gonna cost you a lot more than the actual plant itself. This is a fake fig plant, and I think it cost me like $150. A real fig plant can cost you anywhere from $30 to $80. But the thing is, like, if you want it to look realistic, if you don't want it to break whenever you move it, you can really ruffle this around and you don't have to worry about the leaves falling off of the plant. Whereas if you get a very cheapo plant, man, that stuff just breaks apart all the time. The fake dirt crumbles and breaks. And if you've got kids that are just messing with your plants, which, <laughs> <laughs> Literally like our plants in this house always stay on our, our media consoles and credenzas and everything like that. From a child proofing standpoint, it also behooves you to have like nice fake plants. In my opinion, you really can't spend too much on fake plants and pillows. I've been known to spend about $1,200 on a single trip to World Market on throw pillows and fake plants, as you can see here. And this is literally all we could fit in this frame, but there are so many other plants and pillows in this house that's not even included here. So trust me, if you've purchased nice furniture and your place looks pretty good and you're like, ah, oh, it's missing something. Usually the addition of a couple plants here and there in the corners can really liven up a space. World Market, in my opinion, has the best selection on both of these items. I think we should talk about splurging because I think the hardest part for most people that are setting up a short-term rental or an Airbnb in general need to really understand that you need to choose your battles from a budget standpoint. And what I mean by that is that if you're like most normal people, you have a budget set and you, you really don't want to go over that budget. And so there are sacrifices that you have to make along the way. So it's really about asking yourself, do I want the living room to be the showpiece or do I want the dining room? to be the showpiece or the kitchen. Now, whenever I'm breaking down my budget and having to make the heartbreaking decision on where to splurge, I usually tend to spend a lot of my budget towards the cover photo of your Airbnb listing because this is gonna be the biggest photo on your listing that is really selling your house to anyone. If you wanna charge two, three, four, five hundred dollars a night, you really gotta sell them in a nice, beautiful photo. And so you really have to decide what room is gonna sell your place the most. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be a room. For example, like here in my cottage in Tennessee, I've got a giant deck with a view of the Smoky Mountains. So maybe in this instance, I would splurge a little bit more on my patio furniture because that would be part of the epic photo that showcases the mountains that surround my house. But honestly, pretty consistently, I put most of my money into the living room. That is where people are gonna be hanging out. They might have a beer, they might have some cocktails, wine, heroin, whatever that is, that's really going to be where people are gathering together, sinking in, vegging out, watching TV, laughing, catching up. So for me, I like to think of my Airbnbs as what place brings the most comfort to people, and that's usually the living room. Now, usually whenever splurging, the pieces that are going to take up the biggest part of your budget are what I call statement pieces. So these are going to be things like couches, coffee tables, credenzas, buffets, media consoles, side tables, and dining room tables. And these are basically the pieces that are going to be defining your space, so I'm fine breaking my budget here. As for where, I'm I'm usually getting my statement pieces. These are usually the more big box retailers that are on the premium side. So this is gonna be like your West Elm, Crate and Barrel, Restoration Hardware, CB2, Pottery Barn, and of course, Ross. I honestly think that the worst part about setting up and buying furniture for your Airbnb is the fact that we tend to buy things that are so much nicer than we'll ever own in our own houses. Prime example is this couch, which is the most beautiful thing that I've ever laid eyes on. And we don't even get to take it with us when we move back to LA because it's staying behind with this Airbnb. I'll miss you. <laughs> Speaking of couches, I'm usually snagging these from Article when I can. Like I said earlier, World Market's a great option too. The West Elm outlet has super affordable options as well. People also rave about the Polly and Bark brand leather couches on Amazon. And don't worry, you don't have to scramble. A lot of this is going to be linked out in my shopping list in the description below. 
Now let's talk about the greatest place on earth, which is obviously Costco. I get some pretty specific things from here like batteries, pots and pans, and hotel grade towels. And they also have absurdly cheap pillows. You can get like two memory foam pillows for like I think $12.99 or something. Costco also definitely comes in the clutch for things like cleaning supplies, toilet paper, paper towels. Like for real, it's by far the cheapest and best place to get butt paper. And obviously I stock all my Airbnbs with steaks from Costco because duh. Lastly, I tend to fill in all the different gaps on Amazon and get, you know, final little touches. And if I'm missing a fake plant and I need it super fast or knickknacks or pieces of art, whatever that may be, I get that from Amazon. I definitely get all of my mattresses and bed frames from Amazon too. This mattress and bed frame is actually from Zinus or Zenus. I've never actually said that out loud before. This bed frame pretty much matches any style that I go with on Airbnb. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the last I heard, these have some kind of recall or something like that. I've never had an issue with them, but either way, I also get sleep signature mattresses too off of Amazon and people rave about these mattresses. Like they will contact me literally one year later and be like, hey, where'd you get your mattresses from? They're so nice. I've never slept so good in my life. So you're welcome for the free advertising mattress companies. And final point that I just realized I hadn't thought about until this moment. For the most part, I get all of my rugs from ruggable.com. All right, take a deep breath. That was a lot. Let it sink in, digest it, process it. Go back, watch the video again. You're gonna be fine, I promise. But hopefully now you have a pretty good idea on how to tackle furnishing your Airbnb. Maybe? If this is the biggest component that's been holding you back from starting an Airbnb business, hopefully now you have a little bit more comfort knowing that it's, it's really not too bad. Back when I had a consulting business, the furnishing aspect of an Airbnb is what used to really hold back my clients because they really felt like they were biting off more than they could chew. So yeah, that's furnishing an Airbnb. We go into this type of excruciating detail on furnishing and so many other topics in host camp. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my mentorship program, I'll leave a link down in the description below for you. Otherwise, go forth and furnish my children.